one child beside a dead pony. What's up YouTube? Thought I'd do a little video on my new bug and what I found in it. Somebody was real, real meticulous here about keeping the gas gauge starting like in 1984. Looks like they kept going. <clears throat> Gas and oil consumption. Sixty-seven thousand two hundred and ninety-five, eight point four gallons, eleven dollars and sixty-two cents. And that I think it came back to either 87 or 88. We are at 76,940 right now. 2024. Unfortunately, they didn't really care too much about the lubrication. When we get over to the repairs. It looks like we got a new clutch back in 1986. So that's kind of exciting. Yeah, I also came across this up until 1970. And in fact, I just did the oil right around the same time last week. Okay, as far as I know, we have the original 1300 engine in here. What I've done is swapped out the fuel pump, changed the coil, changed the wires, and rebuilt the carburetor. And I did have to file the points. It also has no stamp mark on the engine. So, anyone knows what that means. I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for some of this stuff. But I've owned this car for 25 years. A large portion of that 25 years it has been sitting around this last year. Oh. And underneath here and here we have a not the original engine years back I swapped it with a 1974 engine because when I got this car when I was 17 years old I tried to rebuild the engine and then ended up moving into the car and traveling across the country driving back and forth which it did make it across the country twice and from Canada to Houston on two cylinders by the end of that trip Anyway, it's been around. 
So last year I finally could afford to do a few things and I put on some dual MP carbs, the HP MX 40s, which I know are not too popular, but they seem to do all right. The Pureberg fuel pump, the Petronics distributor and coil. Uh, we added a little tachometer. You can see that and a temperature gauge up on the top and a Porsche filler and we also added some Taylor 10 millimeter spark plug wires which was a little bit overkill but the place I was shopping at was out of the Petronics brand we added a MSD serpentine belt the MP breather and then I don't know if you can see that catch can up by the filler that probably has no purpose but we put it on there anyway and then we added a MP muffler and a little mini sump Okay, so there is a lot in here. I don't know, it looks like a disaster. That's because it is basically a disaster. What we have is wired in a switch with a bunch of stuff. Right here we have our custom horn. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna turn it down a bit. Oh shit. That one's set locked on. And of course. So that's where I have the PA for the custom horn, which you can find the instructions if you look up custom horns on YouTube here. DIY projects, if you want to try that. I added a windshield washer reservoir. And so that I wouldn't have to screw with the fuse box a whole lot, I added a... Uh, for hooking up trailers, but basically it is a way to have a junction for all this extra stuff. And here we have, I really like this one, is a uh, the compressor for it, which I have hooked up so that you need to fill up a tire you can, but that connects to my air horn for a Mack truck. 
The only problem with it is, is it is very loud. So, I tried putting a little bit of soundproofing here behind it. And, well, I still don't have it really honked my horn a whole lot. And over here, another stupid idea was my winch. I do live in the mountains. So this thing did pretty good this last winter. <clears throat> Other than the heater wouldn't turn off. And finally, on to my paint job. I did this about a year ago in one week. So oh, it's held up pretty good. It was done with a Sharpie paint marker. And then I did spray paint a clear coat over it. That side held up pretty good. We got our side. did not hold up as good and I had waited to put the clear enamel on it on some of it and it definitely faded off the hood need to be redone and then the roof oh see where there's some problems with the roof Still looks pretty cool. Not quite finished. Another 25 years and I'll be done. Okay, plus we got the tachometer and the oil pressure gauge, which unfortunately was showing the wrong pressure or we got some real huge problems. But our switch controls the base we got a rear light, which I'll show you in a minute. Our backup camera, that's for the air compressor, for the air horn. The apocalypse lights actually controls the headlights, which I'll show you here in a minute. And then the air horn, which controls the fan to my amp, so it mostly stays on. And that is our custom horn over on the right. We were actually having blinker problems for a while, and I did fix the problem, but I also decided that I wanted some additional blinkers. So we have this, and this is our external blinkers. 